What is up, ladles and jelly spoons? The second one, the second crack at this, um, this Patreon that we got going on here. And what I'm gonna do today is film or record a kickboxing class, all right? And we're gonna be doing four count combinations Round one, we're going to start with a four count combination, A, scratch that. Round one, we are going to start with two variants of the four count combination. I apologize, my brain is just not doing what it's asked today. Which leads me to wonder whether I am in control of this ship at all and who is behind the wheel. If ships have wheels, Yeah, yeah, they got the wheels with sticks. Anyway, we're going to start round one. Or do they have... Never mind, this is a conversation for another time, Tom. We're going to have two variants of the four count combination. All right, so we're going to have lead hook into lead roundhouse, into the cross into the lead roundhouse, and we're going to have the cross into the lead roundhouse into the lead hook into the roundhouse. All right, normally you see with these... Dutch style combinations, you'll see uh, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, push, pull combination, just single strokes with it. But we're going to be concentrating on the lead roundhouse and the lead roundhouse only today. Why? Because it's money. Simple as that. Think about all the valuable things that a human body contains. All right. I'm not talking about wisdom and knowledge and stuff like that. No, that useless cack. I'm talking about organs, baby organs, liver, spleen, stomach, all that stuff that doesn't like getting whacked. And if, an, if you're an orthodox, you're probably going to be fighting an orthodox. So what's the best kick to have? Lead kick. Why? Because that shin just lines up with all that money in the bag. Um, but anyway, apart from talking inordinate amounts of bullshit, I am going to tell you what we're going to train. Um, so those are the two combinations and then in the second round we're going to be going back earlier on in the week we were defending the high hooks um and today we're going to be defending the high hooks again but we're going to use these two variants as as a counter to the high hook defense and we're going for hard defense today and we'll be blocking the hooks okay so block the hook counter with a cross or hook into the rest of that sequence there and what's going to denote um if that's the right word which punch is coming first and then therefore which sequence we'll be doing is if you block with the rear hand you strike first with the lead hand if you block with the lead hand you strike first with the rear hand so we are doing push pull mechanics on the counters right so if i block with my rear then it's going to be hook lead kick cross lead kick if i block with my lead it's going to be cross lead kick hook lead kick if you're hanging with me here after that for round three going on to just simple combination two jab cross just to show that we can be aggressive and we can uh we can we can probe we can get stuck in we get get in the mix and throw a nice easy boxing combination and retain our balance not overcommit, and be ready to defend and counter as part of one sequence. Often when we're just working defense, you know, block, counter, block, counter, block, counter, then you take it into, into more open pad work or into sparring or something like that. Then they'll, all of a sudden they'll start over committing to things because they get a bit, uh, a bit, a bit trigger happy. And then they're way off balance or way over committed. They can't defend and they can't counter. And it's just that one attack. Maybe that one attack will do something good. But after that, they go, oh, nothing. All right. So we're just using that as a check to make sure everything um, balance-wise and stance-wise, composure is where it should be. All right, simple as that. Fourth round, we're gonna open it up so the, so the students can do free pad work with emphasis on keeping the goal the goal and using these counters and seasoning the round with these counters liberally, all right? So then, the, the, the pad holder will have complete control. They can call for single shots or combinations or anything they like. Um, and then a little bit trying to catch them off guard, trying to catch them off balance, overcommitted like round three was a check for. 
and keeping them honest, keeping them humble, keeping them balanced in their stance, ready to be a bear trap when they're hit. Snap counters and flow in amongst the chaos of the fourth round. They can do anything. They got any weapons. They got singles. They got movement. They got other defense if they want. They got combinations. And they got to prove that they have retained that information and that they can perform that information. And once they've performed that information over time, amongst more chaos, regularly, over and over again, they will have learnt it. Okay, so by the fourth round, they will not have learnt it. They'll be performing it and they'll be remembering it, but they won't have learnt it. So this is going to have to be repeated again and again and again. I will tell you the cues that I used and go over the cues that I used. And I want you to, again, write a little list of cues you think I might use or cues you might even use and you can compare them at the end of the session if you'd like. I mean, it will help you out. And then we'll we'll touch base after after you've seen the four rounds and after you see my running commentary like last time, as the as I, as I record my students training training this session. Free isn't free. I'll say on the fourth fourth round, free isn't free. Uh, free isn't free. All right. So we are going to have to be strict with them, um, and we are going to have to uh, you guys as well looking watching and seeing how much they're actually using the counters and whether they're just turning the free round into a free round, which they shouldn't do. And it's my job to make sure that that shit doesn't go down, but probably will. But we'll see. So, sequence, first round. Defend into the sequence as a counter, second round. Probe or go fishing with combination two, balance, composure check, commitment check on round three, and then free pad work to show that they can remember it amongst a little bit more chaos and randomness on round four. And then after that, and after you've heard the commentary, I'll tell you how it went, how I thought it went, how I thought I did, how I thought my students did, and all in all, just how the session went. All right, so I'm going to give you a little bit less information before the session today and give a lot of it to you after. So let's get on with it. Who has fun smiling? So, 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 so. We are going to be taking our time telling you what we're going to be doing. What we're going to be doing today is creating two different counters to two point cover. Okay, so we worked on Monday on defending the high hooks and, uh, and countering. We're going to do a slightly different counter. We're going to do a four count counter. First, we're just going to set them as set them as two different combinations. All right, it's going to be very lead kick heavy, very lead kick heavy. So all the kicks that we're going to throw are going to be coming off the lead leg. So we're going to be really dialing in on the switch, and we're going to be using the hook and the cross. So I just show you the two options first. We'll isolate those two options. We'll work on those, and then we'll introduce them as counters, and then we'll work further from there, making it a little bit more random, a little bit more confusing. So we really, really have to perform and remember so that we can learn, all right? But, first things first, let's get these, let's get these combinations done. What do you do? We've got two options, all right? It's gonna be punch, kick, punch, kick. The kick is always gonna be the lead kick. So let's just recap that kick first. I'm in my stance. What I'm gonna do, again, imagine my big toe is a match, and I'm trying to light the match on the floor, rather than doing a big, Switch like that. I'm going to be keeping it nice and close to the floor, and from there, dropping down, punching the parrot off the shoulder, and thrusting the hips. All right. Difference is today that we're not going to do the two step back. We're going to drop. All right. We're going to focus in on that, getting weightless for a second. We're going to do that again. All right. So we have block, get weightless, kick, get weightless, kick, stuff like that. This time we're going to get weightless, but we're going to come forward with it. So that we're, we're going to land soft 
in our stance so we can continue on. The two options. First, I'm going to start with the lead hook, all right? So I'm just going to turn in a little bit, just wind the shoulders up a little bit, and then instead of focusing on pushing this lead shoulder forward, I'm going to concentrate on ripping this rear shoulder back. I don't know why that works, but it seems to work, all right? So I'm concentrating on pulling this shoulder back more than this shoulder forward. All right, so I lean in, I turn, rip the shoulder back, boom, land the hook here. From here, I'm in perfect position to start a lead kick, right? So I drop, I punch the power off my shoulder, and I throw the kick. I drop, I throw the cross, from here, get weightless again, punch the parrot, and throw the kick one more time, and then land, okay? So with a little bit more speed on it. We in, one, two, three, back into my stance. Then I'm just going to reverse it. Cross, kick, hook, kick. Okay? Cross, kick, hook, kick. So, the two options. Let's go round one. We've got Sindra hitting the pads and either holding the pads. And uh, I must say, I must say, I feel quite bad about filming Sindra today. I didn't want to film Ida because I already filmed her on the first session. So Sindra was up, but I didn't realize he was having quite a bad day. Uh, must say, he already has a cracked or bruised rib um, from sparring a, a few weeks ago. Or a couple of weeks ago now and he became ill with the flu almost as soon as he got home after this so his performance isn't the best today um, but his intentions are his intentions are there and he's working to the best of his ability um, so you could actually say that was his best right so you see we get we give each other burpees and we give ourselves burpees when we make too many mistakes here um, had I known he was sick and struggling, I uh, probably would have let him off on that. He's struggling with um, with the drop a little bit, but he is two-stepping out with nice guards, nice tight guards, and he's taking his time. I like that he's taking his time. See, he's struggling with the feet a little bit, but he is taking his time um, to get to know the sequence. Ida, helping him out there. And I wish more people would just take their time to grease the groove in the early parts of the round, we're still coming up on the halfway, so he's got plenty of time and we've got to realise that we are developing athletes and we're developing technique with our students. If they want to just be strong and fast, they can get, they can get a strength and conditioning coach. Obviously, we have to do that too, but first and foremost, technique. And coaches... It is very easy to be hypnotized by speed and power when people are just gunning it on the pads that we actually don't force ourselves to look at the technique and the intention, the technical intention. So keep that in mind, all right? Fast, loud, powerful, hard doesn't usually mean that, doesn't always mean they're training hard. Getting better with the dropping into the kick. Today, I mean, we're, de we're developing technique and we are developing you know defense and attack but for me today the primary goal of this is physical literacy right? and I want my students and I want my fighters to be fluent I want them to speak the language so you'll get students asking about movement patterns like can I just do it this way or can I do it like this fighter does it or can I do it like I like to do it and the answer is not now, right? I'm teaching these guys to read, and I'm teaching these guys to write, and I'm teaching these guys to speak the language, and we need to know all the letters, we need to know all the words. 
And we need to know the grammar, physical literacy. Just mull, mull that over. 